being a minority in Hollywood is tough. You don't wait on Hollywood. Hollywood is a bank and the decision makers don't get the content. Marlon Wayans recently spilled the tea on a juicy Hollywood secret. It seems that Tinseltown might owe the Wayne siblings a jaw-dropping fortune stemming from their involvement in Scary Movie 3, 4, and 5. We never walked away from our franchise that we created. It was taken. According to the Gossip Mill, specifically the Numbers website, the alleged Hollywood debt tallies up to an eye-popping $155,200,000 from the third installment, an astonishing $178,710,620 from the fourth flick, and an additional $78,613,981 from the fifth movie. That's a staggering grand total of around $400 million that appears to have slipped through the cracks and never made its way into the Wayne's pocket. We probably should sue because they probably owe us a load of money. Mm -hmm. And maybe one day we will. Now you might be wondering, how on earth did this happen? Why didn't they get their hands on this mountain of cash? Well, brace yourself because I'm about to spill the beans on the perplexing details. In the heart of Hollywood's labyrinthine history, a story unfolds that intertwines the creative brilliance of Marlon Wayans and his brothers with the towering presence of the Weinstein brothers. At the epicenter of this tale lies a staggering sum, $400 million, a symbolic figure that encapsulates both ambition and deception. You see, See, the Waynes family, often likened to the Jacksons of the comedy world, have produced a slew of memorable and cult classic films over the years. However, among their comedic creations, none quite hit the comedic sweet spot like Scary Movie 1 and 2. The Scary Movie franchise, notably the first two installments, fundamentally reshaped the horror comedy genre. Rather than merely blending scares with humor, these films took a bold approach by wholeheartedly embracing the art of mockery and unceasingly cracking jokes. Where am I? Um, you're, you're behind the couch. The writing was refreshingly innovative, injecting a breath of fresh air into the realm of spoof films. It was cheeky, irreverent, and side-splittingly hilarious, with no pretense of being polite or politically correct a factor that resonated deeply with audiences. In its early days, Scary Movie was a family affair, directed by Keenan Ivory Waynes and starring the Waynes brothers Marlon and Sean, who also co-wrote the films, it was a collaborative effort that brought forth these comedic gems. According to a 2000 Jet Magazine article, Marlon Waynes candidly shared the genesis of the hit movie franchise Scary Movie, offering a glimpse into the creative process that led to its inception. Marlon and Sean Waynes, known for their comedic prowess, revealed that the the idea for the movie was born during a rather unconventional movie-watching session. As Marlon Wayans recalled, I think we were watching I Know What You Did Last Summer, and we said, I know what I'm gonna do next summer. I'm gonna make fun of all these damn movies. I'm so tired of seeing them. I watched Scream till I wanted to scream. I've seen I Know What You Did Last Summer so much that I wanted to become a murderer and anybody who ever made one of these movies. Their frustration with the overabundance of slasher and horror movies in the late 90s served as the catalyst for a satirical masterpiece. The Waynes brothers found the genre to be ripe for parody due to its often absurd and formulaic elements. Marlon Waynes explained, We just found these slasher movies to be kind of ridiculous, and I thought it would be funny to do a parody, but it was one of the hardest movies to write. It looks like a silly slapstick film, but it was not an easy movie to execute. The interview with Jet Magazine also shed light on the arduous journey the script took before becoming the iconic film we know today. The brothers shared that the script underwent numerous revisions, reflecting their commitment to delivering a product that would truly resonate with audiences. As Marlon Wayans recalled, when we first wrote it, we wrote it with the black male lead. But Keenan told us, and he was right, it wasn't true to the genre, so we changed it up and made our heroine a white girl lead, a little ditzy white girl. Intriguingly, the process involved multiple iterations of the script, with versions tailored to different settings and demographics. Marlon Waynes elaborated, We developed so many different versions of this movie. We worked with our brother Keenan, and we wrote a black draft, a white draft, a high school draft, and a college draft. This comprehensive approach aimed to ensure that the humor and satire in Scary Movie would appeal to a wide audience. Despite their best efforts, the script faced numerous obstacles in finding a production home.
home. Multiple film studios passed on the project before it finally garnered interest from the Weinstein brothers. This twist of fate was particularly ironic, as Scary Movie unabashedly spoofed Scream, a horror movie that Dimension had released. The working title of the screenplay upon its acquisition by the Weinsteins was Scream If You Know What I Did Last Halloween. This title eventually evolved into Scary Movie, a name that would resonate with audiences and become synonymous with the franchise. Scary Movie made its theatrical debut on July 7, 2000, and it quickly became a sensation. Despite a modest budget of $19 million, the film's box office performance was nothing short of spectacular. Within just 14 days, it had crossed the $110 million mark, eventually grossing a staggering $278 million worldwide, with $157 million of that coming from the United States alone. Notably, Scary Movie marked a significant milestone by breaking the record for a film directed by an African-American director. Marlon Wayans reflected on the movie's remarkable success, emphasizing the perfect timing and collaboration that contributed to its achievement. He remarked, It was the right movie at the right time, done by the right people. That's really what I feel like it was. And you never know, another one can happen. There's always room. The unexpected triumph of Scary Movie was a testament to the Waynes brothers' creative genius and their ability to tap into the cultural zeitgeist. Following the immense success of the first installment, Scary Movie 2 hit theaters the following year. Despite its commercial success, grossing $141 million on a $45 million budget, the film received mixed reviews from critics. Marlon Wayans attributed some of the criticism to the studio's haste in releasing the sequel to capitalize on the momentum generated by the original. Nevertheless, the sequel's financial success only reinforced the franchise's status as a box office powerhouse. However, the story of the Scary Movie franchise took a chilling turn after the release of Scary Movie 3 Inches in 2003. Fans and critics alike noticed a significant difference in tone compared to the first two films, and the absence of the Waynes brothers was glaring. A 2003 newspaper article confirmed this, with one fan expressing disappointment saying, Once the preview of the third film was released, the first thing I noticed when watching the previews was that the Waynes brothers were absent. I was very disappointed. Sean and Marlon provided the funniest characters from the first two films, so Scary Movie 3 already had an uphill climb. The brothers themselves shed light on the unsettling circumstances surrounding their departure from the franchise. They allege that Bob and Harvey Weinstein, the producers of the series, fired them and proceeded to take control of the franchise. Marlon Waynes explained, People kept blaming us. We did Scary Movie 1 and 2, the funny ones. Everybody thinks we left the franchise or we sold it. No, it was taken from us. I could write a book on that whole thing honestly. They definitely still owe us money, lots of money. What they did was really bad business. The sudden departure of the Waynes brothers from the Scary Movie series marked a turning point in the franchise's history. It raised questions about creative control, ownership, and the challenges faced by artists in the competitive world of Hollywood. The Weinsteins are not the best or the kindest people to be in business with, Wayne said in an interview with Variety. They're very much an evil regime, I guess. They do what they want to do how they do it, and it can be rude and quite disrespectful. We couldn't come to terms on the deal. It's like, if you don't want to pay for the jokes, have somebody else do it. To make matters worse, Marlon Waynes was on a Christmas vacation when he found out that he had been dropped from the franchise which he and his brother co-wrote and helped to develop. We read on Christmas Eve that they were going with someone else for Scary Movie 3, he said. They were evil as F. Wayne said of the Weinstein Brothers and Miramax Studios. We didn't walk away from a franchise. They didn't want to make our deal. And they snatched it. The Weinsteins did some really terrible liker and pillage villages type of business. So it wasn't that we ever walked away from our franchise that we created. It was taken. And us being the creatives that we are was like, all right, bet. If you now watch what I create. In any case, the third installment earned around $220 million worldwide, while the fourth grossed $178 million, and the fifth ultimately earned $78 million in box office revenue worldwide. These figures undeniably transformed the scary movie franchise into a billion-dollar juggernaut. However, while profit is undoubtedly a critical metric in Hollywood, it's not the sole criterion for measuring a movie's worth. The IMDb ratings for the scary movie franchise franchise vary across its installments. The original Scary Movie garnered a rating of 6.2 out of 10, suggesting that it received a reasonably positive reception from viewers. 
Scary Movie 2 followed with a slightly lower score of 5.3 out of 10, indicating a somewhat less favorable response. Scary Movie 3 received a rating of 5.5 out of 10, falling within a similar range as its predecessor. However, Scary Movie 4 saw a decline in its IMDb rating, scoring 5.1 out of 10, signaling a less favorable reception. The fifth installment, Scary Movie 5, received the lowest rating of the series, with a mere 3.5 out of 10, suggesting a considerable level of disappointment among viewers. These ratings reflect the varying degrees of success and audience appreciation across the different films within the franchise. For many viewers, the original Scary Movie remains the most memorable and beloved. The iconic wasp scene in particular stands out as a perfect example of a comedic moment that should feel dated but continues to captivate audiences as a timeless masterpiece. Its enduring appeal lies in its relatable portrayal of certain character archetypes and the clever use of the ever-changing ghost face mask. Furthermore, Scary Movie left an indelible mark on the cinematic landscape. Its immense success led to the birth of a subgenre of spoof comedies, giving rise to films like Epic Movie, Date Movie, and Not Another Teen Movie, all of which attempted to replicate the irreverent humor and genre blending that Scary Movie had pioneered. It also catapulted Anna Faris into the spotlight. She was relatively unknown before she landed that role. While these movies may not have won many awards, they definitely kept viewers entertained. But when it came to the final projects of the film franchise, fans were quite disappointed. In a recent interview with Kevin Hart, Marlon said that the Weinstein brothers took the Scary Movie franchise from them because the Waynes didn't agree to their terms. So, they decided to take the franchise by force. It was like the Weinsteins were raiding a village, and there was nothing they could do about it. Waynes also mentioned that despite it all, he and his brothers didn't just accept defeat. They used their creativity to move forward and create new projects. He suggested that they might have a legal case to sue for a substantial amount of money because they believe they are owed a significant sum. We probably should sue because they probably owe us a load of money. Mm -hmm. And maybe one day we will. Later on, as fate would have it, the Weinstein Company didn't last. You see, the Weinstein Company was a multimedia distribution and production company. It was founded by Harvey and Bob Weinstein back in 2005. These are the same brothers who established Miramax Films in 1979. TWC also includes Dimension Films, a label for specific types of movies founded by Bob Weinstein in 1993. This label has released popular series like Spy Kids, Scream, and Scary Movie. Together, TWC and Dimension Films made billions. In 2012, TWC Films won eight Academy Awards, the most in the company's history. TWC is also involved in creating television content. This is overseen by Meryl Poster, former president of production at Miramax Films, and current television president. Their work includes Emmy-nominated and Peabody Award-winning reality series like Project Runway, along with spin-offs like Project Accessory and Project Runway All-Stars. They also produce the reality series Mob Wives for VH1, and the well-received HBO comedy crime series The Number One Ladies Detective Agency, which also earned a Peabody Award. However, in March 2018, the company declared bankruptcy. It was on the verge of breakdown because of the SA charges held against Harvey Weinstein. It's a scene many of his accusers never thought they'd see. Harvey Weinstein, a man used to walking red carpets, now in handcuffs, doing a perp walk. In July 2018, Lantern Entertainment acquired all the rights to the Weinstein Company films. Although Harvey and Bob Weinstein were equity holders, they didn't benefit from the sale. Bob also formally stepped down from the board. The money earned was used to settle legal fees, cover bankruptcy expenses, and pay off debts to secured creditors like Union Bank. Any remaining funds were meant to be allocated to unsecured creditors and victims of Harvey's misconduct. In any case, whether the Wayne siblings were credited for their work or not, one thing is for certain, they have remained a household name for decades. You see, when you talk about the comedy world, it's impossible not to also talk about the Wayne siblings. Together, this family of 10 has revolutionized the world of entertainment as we know it, both in front of and behind the cameras. The Wayne's family has left an indelible mark on the comedy industry, and their collective talent and contributions have made them icons in the field. Marlon Wayne's, one of the younger members of the Wayne's clan, is well aware of the incredible talent that runs in his family. He has expressed his gratitude for growing up with such remarkable artists 
Davis as his siblings. During an interview on Power 106 FM with Nick Cannon, Marlon shared his appreciation for his family's legacy in the entertainment industry. Think how lucky I am to grow up in my house with my legends, he gushed. I grew up in a house with legends so I can't help but follow in their footsteps and yet blaze my own. While Marlon's sentimentality shines through when he speaks of his family, he also doesn't shy away from sharing some humorous anecdotes about his siblings. He once revealed, Sean used to always beat me up because he was older than me. I'm just a year and a half younger than him, but he beat me up. He's senseless. Keenan is so old that he once spanked me. And then there is Damon. He was always needy, and he still is needy. Marlon added with a laugh, but there is some truth in there. But I wouldn't trade what I went through growing up for anything. Damon Waynes, one of the eldest among the Wayne siblings, grew up in New York City with his family. Their mother, Elvira, was a homemaker and social worker, while their father, Howell, worked as a supermarket manager. It was in this bustling family home that the seeds of comedy were sown, leading to the blossoming careers of the Wayne siblings. Marlon Waynes, in particular, has made a name for himself in the world of comedy and entertainment. His career took off when he starred alongside his brother Sean in the 2004 film White Chicks. After gaining recognition on the WB sitcom The Wayne's Bros, Marlon's comedic talents have continued to shine in recent years, with roles in movies such as Naked, Fifty Shades of Black, Sex Tuplets, On the Rocks, and most recently, Respect, a biographical musical drama based on the life of Aretha Franklin. Sean Wayne's, often described as a girl's magnet, has also carved out a successful career in Hollywood and the comedy world. His film credits include Scary Movie, Scary Movie 2, Dance Flick, and Little Man, among others. Sean's comedic timing and versatility have made him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Back to Damon Wayne's, who is another prominent member of the family, he made a name for himself through his work on Saturday Night Live and the groundbreaking comedy sketch show In Living Color in the early 1990s. His contributions to television and film, including roles in Beverly Hills Cop and the sitcom My Wife and Kids, have solidified his status as a comedic powerhouse. Keenan Ivory Waynes, the second oldest among the siblings, is not only a comedian and actor, but also a director and writer. He has collaborated with his siblings on various projects behind the scenes and even hosted his own talk show, The Keenan Ivory Waynes Show, in the late 1990s. Keenan's latest writing credit, according to IMDb, is on the TV series The Last OG. He is often described as the trailblazing linchpin of the Waynes family's legacy in comedy. Dwayne Waynes, the eldest of all the Waynes siblings, has pursued a career as a film score composer. Unlike some of his siblings who are more visible in front of the camera, Dwayne enjoys working behind the scenes, composing music for film soundtracks such as Dance Flick and Little Man. He has also contributed as a production assistant to projects like In Living Color and My Wife and Kids, both of which involved his talented siblings. In addition to the famous Waynes brothers, there are also the Waynes sisters, including Kim, Elvira, Vani, Nadia, and Deidre. These sisters have made their own mark in the entertainment industry, just like their brothers. Kim, for example, is an actress known for her role in the comedy show In Living Color. Nadia has appeared in I'm Gonna Get You Sucka, while Deidre and Elvira are a accomplished screenwriters. The Waynes family's creative influence extends across various aspects of entertainment, from acting to writing. For fans of comedy who grew up in the 1990s, the Waynes brothers were instrumental in making In Living Color a must-watch show. While other actors on the program were given prepared scripts, Marlon and Sean Waynes had to write their own material. This creative autonomy allowed them to infuse their unique brand of humor into the show, contributing to its success. In Living Color, created by Keenan Ivory Waynes, featured four of his siblings, including Damon and Kim. Marlon and Sean, as the youngest members of the Waynes family, also appeared on the show. However, Keenan insisted that they write their own sketches and earn their screen time. This dedication to their craft paid off, as In Living Color premiered on Fox in 1990 and ran for five seasons until 1994. In its first season, the series received a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Variety Music or Comedy Series. The show served as a launch pad for several Several A-listers, including Jamie Foxx, Jim Carrey, and Jennifer Lopez, further solidifying the Waynes family's impact on the comedy.
comedy world. The Waynes brothers didn't stop at television, they extended their comedic prowess to the big screen. In 1996, they released Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood, a comedy gem that parodied popular hood films of the time. The film hilariously skewered movies like Juice, South Central, Poetic Justice, Friday, Boys in the Hood, and Menace to Society. The Waynes family's signature brand of humor turned these iconic films on their heads, showcasing their fearlessness in tackling various subjects with wit and irreverence. The Waynes siblings collectively and individually have made enduring contributions to comedy. Their ability to navigate both on-screen and behind-the-scenes roles, write their own material, and fearlessly tackle a wide range of topics with humor has endeared them to audiences worldwide. The Waynes family's legacy in comedy is not only a testament to their talent, but also a source of inspiration for aspiring comedians and entertainers everywhere. Despite being duped by Hollywood elites who hijacked their concept for the scary movie sequels, the Waynes brothers have persevered and continue to carve out their own distinct legacy in the entertainment industry. It remains a collective hope that someday Hollywood will rightfully acknowledge and compensate them for the financial gains unjustly reaped by the wine Company. The Waynes' resilience and commitment to their craft exemplify their unwavering dedication to making their mark in the world of comedy and filmmaking, regardless of the obstacles they have faced along the way. Their ongoing success serves as a testament to their talent and determination, inspiring admiration and support from their devoted fan base. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.